Hello everyone, welcome to the learning support video where we'll take just a few moments to identify components or segments of the spine and of the skull. Now, one of the things that's helpful for us to do as we begin our investigation is to start by identifying the components or segments of the spine. And there are five unique segments. We have the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and coccyx regions. Now, if we were to look at these segments of the spine in either an anterior or posterior view, we would simply see one vertebrae on top of another. And in looking at it from either of those views, we would miss the normal curvature of the spine. Now, as we begin to discuss the curvature of the spine, there are two words that I'd like to put before you. Those words are concave, and the next word is convex. And most likely, you've heard these terms before. But what I'd like us to do as we talk about the curvature of the spine is I would like for us to associate a single letter with both of these terms. With concave, I'd like you to think about the letter C. And with convex, I'd like you to think about the letter V. And so we're gonna use the letters C and V to help us describe how the spine is normally curved or its normal structure. Now, to start, what we'll do is we'll look at the skull. And of course, as we look at the skull, it is rounded towards the back. And we're gonna follow or trace this curvature of the spine, just as it's seen here in our image. Now, if we start just below the skull, we'll notice that the cervical spine, which is the top segment of the vertebral column, we'll notice that it essentially dips in a little bit here. And you'll notice that dip that we've identified almost looks like the letter C. And so what we're saying is that if we look at the posterior aspect of the spine, we're saying that the cervical vertebrae is concave posteriorly. Now, if we continue tracing the pattern of the spine, as we get to the thoracic vertebrae, we'll see that it bows out a little bit here, almost resembling the letter V. And I know that's a little bit of a stretch, but it's more of a V than it is a C. And so we would say that the posterior segment of the thoracic spine is convex posteriorly. Now to continue our pattern of the spine's curvature, as we get to the lumbar region, we would see that it also has this C shape as well. And so now we're saying that the lumbar region is concave posteriorly as well. And then our last segment here, the sacral region, we'll notice that it kind of bows out just like it did with the thoracic region. So here we'd also say that the sacral region is convex. So there we have it. We now can identify the concave and convex curvature of each segment of the spine. Now let's take a little bit of a deeper dive into our investigation here. Let's take a look at the number of vertebrae that we have for each of these segments. Now for the cervical spine, we have a total of seven vertebrae. For the thoracic spine, we have a total of 12 vertebrae. For the lumbar spine, we have a total of five vertebrae. For the sacral spine, we have a total of five vertebrae. But there's something unique about the five vertebrae here for the sacral spine. 
these five vertebrae are essentially fused together. Now, with the coccyx, we also have vertebrae that are fused together here, but the number of vertebrae that we have is four. And to total each of the vertebrae of each of these segments, we would say that we have 33 total vertebrae in our spine. Now, one of the things that we'll also see here is that although we have 33 vertebrae, we don't have a corresponding number of nerves that exit the vertebrae. It's a little bit different. Now, one of those that's different is the cervical spine. For the cervical spine, we have a total of eight nerves. For the thoracic spine, we have a total of 12. We have a total of five nerves for the lumbar spine five nerves for the sacral spine, and then one nerve that extends out of the coccyx region. So if we total these, we have a total of 31 nerves. So again, what we've done is we've outlined the divisions of the vertebral column. We've identified the number of vertebrae and the number of nerves that correspond to each of those regions.